what is up you guys we are on set at the 90220 gallery with another episode of 15 minutes at the red dot part of the red dot series and i am your girl miss kayla ashay but today we've got the one the only mr david in the building the what it the do deal? what it do Thanks now of course listen <laughs> I am so excited about this interview because just his vibes, y'all. His vibes alone are just like... Gas me up, there. No, I'm just saying. (laughs) They're just over the roof and through the moon and all that stuff. Like, listen. Okay, so you have found me on the gram. Yep. And I saw that you was a water spring and i was like oh, hey yeah. hey listen listen you a friend of water you a friend of mine so i was like follow yeah. and i was like oh oh this guy is this guy is legit like i checked out Ooh. your music and i was like i'm impressed like Ooh. no for real like i'm not even capping none of that i was like your stuff really go though like yeah, like i appreciate that no nope, but like for real like because i i don't when i say that i really mean it there's so many you know you know people you know doing that they and no discrimination or whatever to any of you guys but your stuff sounds really just a hundred percent professional damn and it sounds like you that boy you need to take off already because i'm tired of this like like seeing these questions, I'm tired because we gonna get into the reason why I'm tired. I'm tired for you. Yeah, you feel me? I don't want that. But it's okay. So I know that you you grew up in Chicago. Yep. Grew up definitely with your auntie. Yes, I did. Did your research? You know, little okay. birdie told me this son, okay. son. Little birdie is she already. little fishy, but I, you know, I call her fishy fish. She little birdie, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you were born in DC though. I was, I was. Yeah. DC, yeah. So like, and you moved. So what? When did you move to uh, Chicago from DC? What age were you? I moved there around. Um, actually, I got to Chicago in two thousand and two. Mm. And I was about 12, 13, going into my 13. Oh, so I thought it was like baby, baby years. No, I was like, okay. I spent about 12, 13 years, or actually like 11 years in D.C. And mm-hmm. then I was adopted by my mm. aunt. Mm. You know, and I had spent some time like in and out of uh, foster care too when I was younger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I have had just, you know, had some issues at home. Like my dad did 17 years in prison. Oh, wow. Um, my mom battle with crack cocaine addiction mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and she's been clean for five years that's amazing um so shout we, out mom yeah shout out to my mom yeah, yeah i'm gonna yeah. call her right after this actually <laughs> um but yeah like i moved to chicago with my aunt really i moved to ohio for like six months oh you know for like for, a second she, with with your aunt with my aunt yeah okay. my aunt took me in she was living in ohio mm-hmm. her job things happened mm-hmm. she's like we gotta move to new york or chicago She's like, let's go to Chicago. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I thought I was getting out the hood, and now I'm back in the hood. But it was cool. Like, I got to Chicago, and it, like, it changed me for sure. It did yeah. develop me. I, I give Chicago the credit of a lot of my personality, yeah. my go-get-it-ness, my mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. outgoingness, like a lot of my just perspective. I mm-hmm. feel like I was introduced to so many layers of life in Chicago. Right. So that was around 2003. I was, like, 12 and I was like seventh grade. I got there like in the middle of seventh grade. So everybody knew each other from elementary. Yeah, how they, was that though? It was transitioning well, I, in the middle of the year. Like I've been in, I had probably been in like eight schools before that. Like Damn. just through like foster care. See, I thought and, like, I was being bad. adopted. Yeah. No, so Ooh. it was it was it was like getting to Chicago, it felt like any other time you was the new kid, it's just yeah. a new city. You mm-hmm. feel me? And mm-hmm. I don't know like everything the ins and outs so the first day it was kind of like break down all the gangs that's the first lesson i had like at the age of 12. oh yeah in chicago you had to get it right you couldn't wear your head a certain way like if your hat's tilted this way or this way and like what colors you wore what streets See, not to go on like no disrespect but it's just like <laughs> 
why? It's, it's just good to know though. Once you get to the city, yeah, you know, there's an environment in every inner city. Like you know, I'm sure if I came and I moved out here in LA, like I would get the same rundown. Like the Rollins is right here, mm -hmm. then you don't want to go over here. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to go over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. so stuff like that. That's but the at first. the age of twelve though, yeah. you should have been just playing with your friends that you just met from the new school that you. Well, you know, you got to fight in. first week. You get to school. At 12, I don't though? know what schools you went to, but I know Listen. all the schools, the city schools <laughs> I got to. Like, first week, you got to fight one person at least. <laughs> like, you got to fight somebody. You got to be able to rap. That's how I learned how to rap. Like You have to. Like, you have to. Wait, you, 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 did you dance? Did you? <laughs> were you good at basketball? So, wait. So, I'm loving it, though. Yeah, wait yeah. a minute. No, I'm that's loving first, it because first day, first week. Chicago. Yeah. You have to be a performer. You got to do something. You got to do, do something. Can you, you rap? Something. Can you dance? Can, Can you, you act? Oh, God. <laughs> Can you fight? Can you be fighters they over here. First day, UFC. Like, like, I fight. Like, I'm, <laughs> damn. Uh, I, I mean, I like, guess. Yeah, like, <laughs> I have been in fights. I don't know if I'm good or not yet. Wow. But, yeah. That's crazy. But it was dope, though. I I, I um I applaud my aunt. Shout out to my aunt, Thomasine. Shout out, auntie. Um, who just exposed me to everything that same first week. Wow. sushi for the first time and just like just really introducing me to to life, life. yeah you know yeah. like she she drove she like followed the bus to school and was like yeah this is the last ride you'll ever get to school so you take this bus and then you come here and then you could transfer and get on this bus wow. and then going home she's like you've been on the green line right we, we went on the green line we went on the train one time together as a family mm -hmm. and she's like remember that train we got on you got to get on that one and I'm like, oh, all right, bet. Oh, no. And then, then I go to school and everybody's like, yeah, that's what you do. Like, you just go home, get on the train. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know how the trains work. They, they 10, 11, 12 years old oh, telling wow. me, like, that's just, you need to get Dude, hit. Dude, I was, I was in college and my grandma was <laughs> on the bus with me. Like, all right, I'm going to go on here. You're going there, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You, woo, doo, woo. But that was, like, for a whole week. You... <laughs> Maybe even two. Maybe okay. even two. But one day, I applaud you, my friend, because hey. I couldn't do it. Good I had life. so much anxiety and just like, but it's just different being a female versus a male. Definitely. But it's just like, still though, you're a kid. Yeah. You're, I'm in college and you're 12. Yeah. Hey. That's college. They, they mm -hmm. dropped me off and was mm -hmm. like, good luck. Mm -hmm. Like two weeks before college, they just dropped me off and was like, yeah, hey, you, you got it, right? We, I'm like, I think this is the first time. Did you ever get lost? Where? In On Chicago? Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. But, like, again, the first official day at school, they told you which streets not to go down. <laughs> so I never went down those streets. Like, I, I ain't never been jumped or nothing. So I always, no, I've never been lost. That, I'll just say that. I've never been lost. No. Well, thank the Lord. Cause like, that's a little crazy. It is, I'm sorry, it is. I would have forgot. And I'm like, Grandma, I don't know where I am, but you need to come pick me up though, cause <laughs> I was <would've laughs> <been scared. laughs> something. And my aunt would Somebody laughed. need to. My aunt would have laughed at me. She be like, yeah, Tough pick it up. up. Hey, they, that's the best way. I was just telling this story she yesterday. She's a man. Ooh, I was telling this story yesterday <laughs> about my driver's license, cause like. In high school, there's a requirement. You got to take a class, get a permit. Mm. Then they send you to another high school who got the driving program, right? Mm. So I go to this school, Kiri High School, to get my program. I'm leaving the jump. Like, my first day out, of, I'm leaving it. And I'm going, walking across the street. This the train right across the street. And I get, and we looking in the train. It's packed, like, 200 students because people getting out of school mm -hmm. slash other kids right. from other schools oh, are coming yeah. here, right, work, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. This Mexican gang jumps four black dudes right in this train thing, like, and they like run up in the train, and the people that work at the train, they go inside the little like inner thing and lock the doors. And it's I'm talking about there's hundreds of kids here, and they like jump in this dude, and I'm like, okay. Then a guy with nunchucks smacks somebody on the street. I'm these is facts though. These is, these is facts. What? Like this shit like turn into a kung fu movie at a high school. I swear to God. So long story short, I'm like 14, 15 years old. Look, I can't, I'm like, all right, that's what they doing to regular people. What? I'm like, all right, this this is different. So stories like that, stories like that, I didn't get my license till I was like. 
21 years old because I never went wow. back to that high school to to take that test because I I'm like <laughs> bruh it's no way somebody hitting me with no nunchucks dog like I ain't got nothing for that stop you, um, you had me at the chucks this so for real. I'm this literally is, crying is this is why I couldn't these wait for this Chicago interview to come facts, about yo. this man right here though I already know it's gonna be something real fact, what other yo. stories you got for me anyways hold on let me let me come on we get on track we get on, on track so fishy I mean birdie said <laughs> 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 um, you went to a Kanye West concert, yeah. mm -hmm. and was that was the reason why you were inspired? Yep. To I, start rapping, I would say that that kind of inspired me in a, in the in the longer run to kind of like dive into music and performance. Mm. Um, I would say with the precursor to that, like so that same day I get to the seventh grade, this cancer middle school, like these things happen on the day mm -hmm. like I remember Elliot Elliot Brown asking me what gang I was in and, and then once I didn't know they explained we in, a, in like a homeroom we spent the entire homeroom explaining the gangs and then after that I got into my next class and one of the homies was like you rap and I'm like okay so I see it's gonna be a series of tests today and I'm like nah nah really I love music I like music but like I don't rap and then he's like, well, I bet. Well, like, let me spit some shit. And he starts spitting, like, Twister lyrics, right? Mm. Like, you know, Twister. Uh -oh, yeah. And, like, he rapping them. And me, I'm not hip to anybody from Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm 12, 13 years old. Right. I'm not even hip to nobody right. yet. So he rapping it, and I'm like, this is outrageous. Who is that? He's like, you ain't never heard of Twister? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, it was Twister. Like, I ain't never heard of Twister. Wow, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I know yeah. Jay-Z. He, like... To, no twisters so he gave me all this stuff to go look up on LimeWire and download <gasps> LimeWire yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that old damn so hey it's me too though okay. I used to download some music on LimeWire my dad showed me some like, I talking about my dad showed me you see child play me like shit. hey <laughs> but so I go I check them out right and then right. like even before the day even ends after school they battle rapping oh. and battle rapping is how Every day? I not every day, but like right after this for this particular day, they were battle rapping. So when I left sc left school, I went outside. You know, I gotta get on that train mm -hmm. or walk walk to the crib. Mm -hmm. They battling, and I'm like, God damn, this is amazing. Right. Like I loved rap before, but like now I'm seeing it. No beat. Oh. You know, this is happening. Oh, right. That yeah. kind of like throws me into this whole mix of shit, and mm -hmm. like. From that time, from like 03 into like, you know, 06, 05, like when I get into high school, that's when I kind of like really start to hone in my skills. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's not until like my senior year of high school where I go to the Kanye, the dr college dropout oh, concert, yeah. not college dropout, excuse me, the graduation. Oh, the, okay. It's called the Glow in the Dark Tour mm. with Rihanna. And Lupe oh, Fiasco that's what, oh, okay. and NERD. Okay. And NERD oh. played with two drummers. Dang. Chris Brown came out. Oh wow! He was, you got the he was whole going crazy. Thing. Common was there. Oh, it was cra it was crazy. Oh, I would have been Diddy so inspired. Was there. Diddy? Diddy was there. He was on the side of the stage. Yeah, he was there too. It was crazy. Kanye oh. had the stage. It looked like a moon landing. It was like a ten by ten it's like thing. He woke up on it like it started like this. Wake up, Mr. West, Mr. West, and then he wakes up, and then the the screen comes up like this, like it tilts up. So he like he he doesn't have to stand up. He's just like now he's like up, and then it like goes back down. He's standing, bro. And then the, the 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 thing is like a digital, so it could change and turn and stuff. Right. And then the whole orchestra, the whole band was under the moon landing. Bro, you were inspired. Like in, the, in in the bottom, and I was like, dude, oh my god, we just graduated mm. high school like mm. a week before this, right? Oh, I think like a week before this, we just graduated. Mm -hmm. My homie got some surprise tickets, then. Um, the other homie got some for his birthday, so now I got two tickets, and I'm like, my homie homies, look, my homie homies is sitting in like the 300, right? These my niggas, we go to school together, like these my niggas, like one of the niggas I told, hey, you should quit football, you ain't good at this, but he, oh, he was still cool. Damn. This was my, this was my man's. That's how cool he was. I was able to tell him like, hey, stop doing it, bro. 
you making us look bad as a crew. Like, just be, you just be cool, be fresh. I be a football player. And, like, so these my men, my nigga James Lee, that's my nigga, too. That's my nigga, too. That James wow. Lee, that's my nigga. It's him and Sterling, Sterling Williams. And I'm like, all right, bet. Um, they got 300 level tickets. My homie Matt Soliday, till this day, Matt Boy White, excuse me, I said this whole government. Matt Boy White, he a DJ, or creative. He's like, bro, I got a ticket, but it's on a hundred level on the side. Ooh, ooh. Bro, I gave them tickets up to my man so fast. I was like, hey, I'm so sorry, Going. bro. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know yeah, this was hey, a surprise, hey, the graduation hey. thing, and but your mama got these tickets specifically for me, you, and my man. I got to give you this ticket back, bro. I'm finna go and be able to touch this man down there. I'm going down there, bro. I'm sorry. And they wow. was like, man, God bless you, my boy. Go on here. We going to hey, see the videos. Real, I, that's what I said. They was like, man, we going to see the videos. Yeah. I was like, I appreciate y'all. Because ah. anybody else, I would have made them feel bad. Man, f*** you, you, man. I hate that. Man, right. f*** you and Stick with tickets, the team. Man. What you talking about? <laughs> Stick with the team, gang. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I went down there, and 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 it, and the Kanye West performance was immaculate. You know, very yeah, unmatched, so in, in especially mm-hmm. in this day and scope of age of performance in right. in, in in our genre, hip hop mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing him do his thing, nobody on stage ever. The only time there was another being on stage was there. They made a a, a forty foot digital uh, gold digger like R2-D2 robot and she was doing this dance when he was doing that song. Wow. The whole The whole show, he was doing a narration and being like, yeah, if you, he crashed the spaceship and he's like, if you help me get back, um, I promise I, 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 do, I never do anything. And then the, 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 the <laughs> ship turns into a gold robot. It turns into a woman. They were like, oh, I'm trying to build the spaceship back. And then flash and flash and flash and flash and Uh, lights. So everything had a story. And, like, it was a whole play. Not one person ever got on stage. And we were there for two hours straight. Yeah, I was about to ask. like, Dolo. What? Solo. The whole thing. Perform, rap, every single word. It was crazy. Now, while that's happening, and we're like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. The, the lighting, the, the sonics, everything's happening. You could see the band under the stage going fucking nuts. Like, mm-hmm. music never stops. Damn. Even when he starts talking, it's like, dum, 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 dum. they're doing like low parts of the next song. So you like, you just, it's just see. seamless. Oh no, they're going to drop that Cause they had a million cameras there, and I ain't never seen one video from that whole show. You haven't. Rihanna was there too. She was just blowing up. Her stage. She right. she changed outfits four times. So they yeah. got footage of this. Lupe Fiasco was there. He was just blowing up. He had a band. It was Nerd open for both of them, and wow. Nerd had two drummers on stage All of at the these same people time. People are just like up Come here on, now, though. So it's just it's like crazy. he like knew what he was it's, doing it's with iconic. this whole thing. Oh. Iconic. These this shutter shade. Wish Kanye, that was... this is that, yeah. Ah. So while all of that is happening and cr- extremely immaculate, mm-hmm. what really captivated me as an artist, as a performer, as this is what I'm going to do, is when I looked to my left and my right, I saw nationalities that I never would imagine being enthralled in this artist and his culture and where right. he's from and right. what he identifies with. And they're rapping and singing and crying to these songs. Crying. I, I swear I've seen an Indian family from ages like 7, 12, 13, 14, mom, dad, grandma, Crying. rap every Kanye West song. I'm talking about, I'm, you know what the Midwest is, young and restless. The next is, niggas, God damn, this nigga know the whole song too. They whole family know the whole oh, song. Enjoy. I swear to God, <laughs> Like that, I, I would look around. It's Asian. It'd be an Asian crew. Like it's like eight, nine, ten of them right here. They rapping this shit harder than everybody I'm with. I'm looking wow. around. They're crying at the parts I'm crying at. I'm like, oh my god. I was gonna say, god. is you crying too, bro? We was. T- I said that at least four times because it just every. <laughs> With a lot of what he was saying, especially in those projects in those times, mm-hmm. is like he was saying words that only he could say. You know, mm-hmm. for Celia now, Romeo must die. Mm-hmm. I know I got angels watching me from the other side. Like Kanye West had a lot of these moments mm-hmm. where 
I watch these shows he referenced. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mm-hmm. Chance the Rapper had that same effect on people because right. he was speaking on things that mm-hmm. we that built our culture. That we. If you you got to be there. You had to be there. Yeah. You had to watch the yeah. Disney Channel. Yeah. You had to watch 106 in Park after school every day at 3.30. Mm-hmm. You had to know what time the show came on. Mm-hmm. If you wasn't there and watching those commercials and seeing Big C the Baby on BET, you're not going to yeah. feel this music. Right, right, right. But I'm seeing people that don't look like me feel it. it. And it was blowing my mind. So Damn. from that day, I wanted to... Co- connect with people on that universal of a level Mm -hmm. and I seen this person achieve it and accomplish it by just purely being them Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I signed up but I mean I feel like you've always been you because Mm -hmm. you were Mr. Popular in high school right what was was it what was it it. no we're gonna talk about it because you're on the red dot what you talking about uh was it prom king or was it uh, homecoming king? I was homecoming king. Homecoming. You couldn't be both. No, nah, I couldn't. But you, you should have uh, been, though. Yeah, I should have been. You should have been. My girl was prom queen. I went to, ah, I went to prom you, with the prom oh, queen. Oh, no, oh, no. And they no. finessed me, so I had to stand Dang. there with the flowers oh. while, she was, while she was dancing with my homie, too. He was on the football team, too. And he laughed. I swear to God, we see the pictures. It's probably pictures of him laughing. Dancing with her and she looking like, damn, I gotta dance with dude. And then That's I'm in the awkward. back like this one. With the flowers. Salty holding the flowers. And then they put a light on me too. No, I they like, didn't want me to do that to you. Like, they like, you know, he should have won. <laughs> they was doing that. He should have won, but we couldn't give it. I'm in that zone. Dumb, dumb, salty, we matching. You know, you gotta come to yeah, matching. Yeah. Why my man's wear an alternate version of what we was wearing? I was so hot. I was so, he looked like that he was That was your matching. man's? Oh, he had a girl and everything. Yeah, he didn't know he was gonna win. I knew I was gonna win because they brought me to the office and was like, "Listen, you can't, win. you can't win. Most outgoing, most sociable, homecoming king, prom king. You cannot win all of these things." The committee has come together and had a meeting that that Dita <laughs> cannot win all of these things in one year. There's no way we are letting one person get out of high school with this much confidence. But the like, thing is, you were that cool. It was cool. Yeah, it was true. You've always been that cool. I had a good time. Throughout your whole like career and everything that you're doing, you know so many people yes, from I Chicago, I from do, I do, I do. even elsewhere. I do. And the simple fact that like, bro, what y'all need to make this happen? Yeah. Like I, I'm speaking well, ahead of the interview. Yes. All right, let me let me bring let me bring back. Let's talk about. Uh, you performed at South by Southwest. Yes, I have, yes. Okay, so explain that story to me. Austin's How Austin. was that for you? Well, okay, the first time I went, it was, a, it was an experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, Actually, I drove 23 hours from University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. That's where I went to college. Mm-hmm. Um, I drove from there to Austin, Texas, fresh out of a class. I failed that class too. And I left that class and we drove, uh, me, my manager, and my homie, Rich Jones, we drove all the way down to Texas and we got to Texas and we like, yo, I had Tim's on. And I'm like, Damn. man, I'm finna rap some shit out here in Texas. You feel me? And represent yeah, Chicago. Right. And um, when we get down there, I kind of got pay- played with this pay to play payola type thing. But I paid my way, you feel me? I, I threw my little lunch money together. Mm-hmm. You know, in college, we broke as hell. So, nigga, really, it was, really it was my weed money. I was blue. I was like, damn. That's my whole it. eighth, dog. Ah! Yeah. Um, so, I like I threw that up. And uh, it was great performance. Fast forward, I went down a, a, um, a second time. And I had no shows. Mm. I had no, like, connections. I had nothing. Mm. And, um... And one of my homies, Gustavo, had kind of like saw me perform in my house Mm-mm. randomly. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, one of my homies from college came to see me. He bought the homie. Mm-hmm. He's, they walked in the door. I used to have rehearsals with my band. I mean, like I had a punk punk, punk rap band at the time. Mm-hmm. And we would uh, perform. I, like we lived together. So we would perform in the living room. And I bring the computer and all the equipment. And we'd play right. right in the living room. Right. Landlord was cool. Every Tuesday we did this. It was scheduled. He comes in, I'm like, oh, give me a second. We're going to do this, then we're going to smoke. We, we was doing like a 20-minute set. So we start cranking some records. My homie Gustavo's like, what the f-? Like, 
this band's nuts. Right. Long story short, he's amazed. He books us a show, puts us on a bill with like, with like, um, Young Chop and oh, Mike Dean was there. Got mm-hmm. us on there. Mm-hmm. Um, Trinidad James. Oh, wow. It was it was a crazy little mix of a show. Mm-hmm. So we did that, and that that just that changed just the tra- trajectory of like what I was doing like that was right. it was the first time I was given a platform for doing something mm-hmm. um, a bit different and, mm-hmm. and, and not what my peers were doing right. you feel me like right. this shit was right. banned and Unreal live level. and right. Right. energy right um, then we went so that time was dope then we went the like the last time I went we kind of went independently mm-hmm. and that's really where I've seen like the growth of me as an individual artist even what you're talking about like somebody needs to make this happen um it's actually the responsibility of me and myself. And I think as an artist, I've been coming to that realization more and more at, over the years mm-hmm. that something this unique is not gonna get an assistance. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. everything that I've seen that's been groundbreaking and you know has come out of nothing, has come out of nothing. Mm-hmm. It hasn't, oh, someone big co-signed that or someone rapped on it and Drake got on that song right. like those artists is great no right. no, no yeah. offense to them but yeah. people that have made a name for themselves and built an empire so wait going going to that yes. so you've uh first off describe your music to me um i would say now my music is fun mm-hmm. that's kind what of what do you mean thing by I'm, fun fun is give a good me time. like actual like classifications is it uh is it hip hop? Is it rock? Is yes, it? it's hip hop. Mm-hmm. It's rock. Mm-hmm. It's blues. It's mm-hmm. soul. It's live. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm playing a lot of instruments. I'm talking mm-hmm. a lot of. Shit. I'm a real nigga, so I really like. You know, I'm gonna speak on that. Shit. I feel like there's so much to talk to you about, um, and it's already been. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yep. So wait, you, your music during the time that you were in Chicago, right? Yep. You had a, a it was a hip hop slash rock, yeah, right? Mm-hmm, like a fusion. Right, um, and during that time, it was very hard for you, correct? Definitely. Because a lot of people weren't acceptable towards your music, exactly. right? But how do you feel nowadays to where so, like everything is like exposed? Yeah. People, you feel like? Do you feel like people are like like taking your stuff and? Is it fair to you in your mind the fact that they're able to be their music is able to be more susceptible to the society, and you've been doing this? Yeah, I, I definitely I would say I, I spend a lot of time jaded about that specific right um just reality right you know of like you know people always giving me the bro you've been ahead of your time right bro you've been on that right or and like, you don't have the real recognition the, yeah. that you should have yeah like how do you that How like that? it's it's frustrating for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, again, I would say I was I was depressed. I spent a lot of time in college very depressed. Mm-hmm. I went to school and studied English to kind of set a representation for my brothers. Like you know, I came from a broken home, so mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. to do that regardless that I already had steam and you know making music and opening for people. Like I probably open for everybody who's like a legend now in Chicago. Like J Cole's first show. Wiz Khalifa's first show, Mac You're Miller's kidding. first show, definitely. There's footage, there's flyers and everything. I did all of those shows. I was the first person to perform with them in Chicago. Um, and then it. some of those shows I, I crowd surfed, you feel me? And I smashed, what? I smashed those shows. Like, Wiz Khalifa is a crazy footage Why of that aren't show. aren't you where you're supposed to be? Um, but I just think at the time when I was in Chicago, they didn't have the... the um, infrastructure they didn't yeah. have the, the the websites that they have now they didn't mm-hmm. have the outlets that they have now mm-hmm. the internet wasn't used the way it was mm-hmm. you know I would I would say I was viral before there was viral I could go to a party and rap for 75 people with no beat like turn the beat off because the sounds whack and then rap 16 bars and be like yeah I'm gonna get back to partying because I'm high and y'all high and I already know what that's what we came here to do and get off the jump and then yeah. after that Everyone wants to meet you because you didn't spend 15 minutes trying to force a song that we don't know mm-hmm. onto us. Right. You just wrapped your piece and got off stage. Man, I like him and his energy. Right. So th- I used to use that. And I, I think at the time, there wasn't really a lane for something so different. And I felt like at the time when I left and went to school, it opened up mm-hmm. 
and and a lot of these opportunities and artists that you see flourished at that moment like kids these days or like um, Chance the Rapper these are people that I heavily influenced mm -hmm. you know like someone like Vic Mensa I took to the studio for the first time ever in his life wow. like he hadn't been to ever. an actual studio until I took him to a studio That's so wow. like it's like that where it's like you know and I introduced mad people to right. like oh this is where they no, make yeah, music I've at. heard that you were super 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 humble yeah and 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 like I you know now in in the like later times I've rekindled or reconnected with artists that are from Chicago like mm -hmm. Mick Jenkins or like Saba mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they've given me stories of like bro I was 13 and your mixtape changed my life and it's like damn I heard that 12 I dropped that 2007 my boy like 2008 out of my Hollister money I used to work at my first job was Hollister I wow. worked it three weeks to get a check and spent the check on making a mixtape right, like I right. that's the only real job I had in Chicago low-key and those I see those moments when I look back now in hindsight when they say things like ahead of your time right you know and and um I don't see it as I miss my beat because like you just spoke on how things are happening and it's transpiring to be of now. Like mm -hmm. we seen the Young Thug thing with the punk shit. You feel mm -hmm. me? Willow Smith rocking with Travis Barker. You feel me? Like Lil Wayne was Lil Wayne. Oh yeah, Long but they ago. they was on his ass though. They they was on his ass um, when he was getting different and okay. was like, "What are you doing? You yeah. skateboarding? You yeah. this, that, and the third. I I was a kid. Eighth grade, I bought my first or seventh grade, I had a skateboard. Mm. Eighth grade, I was brave enough to bring it to school. That wasn't the thing? Bro, I got clown, bro. I got clown wow. bringing a skateboard, being black in Chicago, bringing a skateboard. Lupe what? Fiasco, that's in 2006. Oh, that's in 2003 I did that. Mm -hmm. In 2004, two, uh, Kick Push blows up. I'm a freshman in high school. I didn't stop skateboarding. I still oh. love skateboarding. I stopped skateboarding and started playing football because motherfuckers like, well, you, you ain't getting no girls skateboarding, bro. Wow. That's lame. That's corny. That's white. You might as well do something else. Can you hoop? Nah. Can you play football? Yeah, I could crack. Yeah. I could tackle for sure. Like, so <laughs> I started doing that. But then I saw Lupe Fiasco blow up and I was like, but I was lame last year. What happened? So I've seen that happen in multiple cultural waves mm -hmm. and now I just think um, it's happening in a sense where things are changing and I'm ready for that change. Yeah. I, actually, I don't gotta change the change with the change. It's just now shit's changing now. Everybody wanna be like what I've already been like. Mm -hmm. If I change my perspective on being jaded, I can just see the universe is conspiring in my favor. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's making everyone into that. Right. So when they see the real deal, You're the originator. Come on, baby, they go, they go fuck with it. So exactly. I feel like that's where I am. That's what my music sounds like. It's, mm -hmm. It sounds like of the times. It's mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and that's how I even got into making this. I felt like in 2012, 2011, 2013, them times people weren't speaking on what was happening with the type of enthusiasm right. and energy right. that I needed them to. Yeah, Niggas right. thought, oh, we're going to make a protest song with saxophones and it's going to be jack. No, bro. We got to fight fire with fire. Why ain't we coming with no energy? White people mm. want to talk about a story or talk about, you know, killing in the name of Rage Against the Machine. These black, these white people put up a band and got a message. They're going to say that with their chest right, you right, feel me right. we got a message we got a um it's peace and it's love nah fam all of that i'm saying this shit with my chest mm. they killing niggas mm. out here and mm. nobody else they famous niggas ain't gonna say it right kids well, lamar say it. dropped the album the good kid mad city in the middle of that shit and it was like damn bro i love this album so jazzy yeah. but damn is somebody gonna come and say something and then you mm. come black years later and he drops the damn album that's the energy that i wanted when the good kid was out because right. that's what was happening mm -hmm. niggas was getting shot mm -hmm. i'm in chicago i'm seeing gun violence firsthand and niggas is all mm -hmm. oh. and like even like when the chief keith thing happened and everything blew up i promise you it was more nigga. i knew more people in chicago like chance the rapper and vic mensa right. than i knew like chief keith mm -hmm. i knew there was violence and niggas that was with that shit. Yeah, like right, like right. I said, you learn that the first day you in Chicago. Yeah. But you also learn that if you get on a, a bus or a train and you go downtown and go to the north side mm -hmm. or go to the museum, you're going to run into some shit that's
that's not from around here. And everybody was on that wave. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a lot of young niggas on that wave where mm -hmm. we was from the hood or they was hood adjacent. Like, I stayed in High Park, wasn't even hood. But I knew I'm going to go to 35th Bronzeville, go to the low end, go to the south side, and link up with some niggas in the, on the east side. And all we talking about, all we trying to do is, man, we got to go to a law party up north, bro. They be on some different we got to get up north, bro. We got to get on the train, bro. I'm trying to get some retros. Like, I'm trying to get, I'm on a fashion. We got to go up in the Urban Outfitters, bro. Urban Outfitters. Oh, no. That drop. We was in there all the time trying to get bow shoes and shit and cool shades. Like, that's what niggas was really into. Mm -hmm. Then I see all this stuff on the internet that, oh, Chicago is about drill music and trapping. And I'm like, well, like 10, 15 percent, 25 percent of that shit is like that. But the rest of it is. It's very eclectic and right. interesting. Yeah, like, right, right, so right. That, I just think, again, like there wasn't those outlets there now. And like I had an interview and somebody asked me like, how you feel about that? Mm -hmm. I feel like just like when I was asked in the seventh grade and they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I was a person that never said a rapper or artist, a what millionaire. I used to say influential. Mm. And now I look back on my life and my moments and who watches my story every day on Instagram mm -hmm. or who contacts me to come hang out mm -hmm. or every time I'm in LA or who who or who do I frequent? Very influential people. Mm -hmm. Like I've influenced some of the most influential yeah, artists of our time. Right. Yeah, these people I mentioned. I, right. Yesterday I was with Jay from State Farm. I, I Stop. We're not even going to talk about that because it's supposed to be then. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, that's somebody I know from Wait high school. Like, these, it's that's just crazy. When I think about those moments, it's like it's a lot of shit that's happened in my life where my impact, like this says your impact right there in that book, has, has been like illustrated in, 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 a, in a space that I couldn't have imagined. Um, so. Your yeah, impacts. that's where I am now. Your right? Yeah, that's a good call. Right. I gotta see what's in right. that. Let me I see. I know, I know, yeah. All right, white boy. Like, dog him, just dog him on there. Like, Chance the Rapper used to make good music. Like, he was doing a whole thing about it. I was like, damn, he about to put that on Netflix. <laughs> Folks, that's real. Damn. I don't care. Like, damn. Like, okay, cool. But, yeah, I, I was looking at that. I'm like, if you ask any young nigga right now, I swear to God, I could go in a restaurant and a Smino song would play, and I'd be like, yeah, that's my homie. You know, oh my God! Like, bro, I'm t I, I'm telling you, a lot of them niggas on that list ain't got the effect that bro and them. The, a lot of me, if I say Saba, Mick Jenkins, I say them names on the real rap shit. On the I love the craft. I swear to God, if you ain't mentioning them people, you're not really into this rap. Shit. Toby Lou, Toby Lou got more rank than a lot of cats on a straight like spitting shit. The niggas is like, bro, young niggas, 21, 22 are like, bro, these are the best rappers in the world. They're from Chicago. Smino's making up a whole fucking sub language. Like, this shit is, it's no world really comparable. He's from Illinois, but what's Chicago? Yeah, he's yeah, he from, he from St. Louis, but he went to, his exactly. people's from Chicago, his exactly. shit from Chicago. That's next door. All right, so you look, feel me? Like, so look, Dave, she gonna ask you some questions. You gotta stick to the questions. Got it. We got some really dope questions. There's so yes, many questions that I'm trying yes, to ask yes, you, but conversation is so great with you. It's so it's like, don't, ah. you, don't you got a podcast too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do another one, do a part two or something. We got to do the Compton don't jump right though. We got to get this. Yeah, it'll be like a story time guest where we just come in and do like specific yeah. segments about exactly. studio sessions or people. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah, I, I got a lot of them on assessment school. Is he rolling? We rolling? Is you rolling? We rolling 10 minutes. We rolling. All right. What did you see in there? Um, just a few, some inspiration. Did you get, yeah, you I got actually, inspired? I, just, I didn't get to read any of it. You didn't yet. get to read? No, nah, because we was talking shit. And what are you talking we about? I gave you the time book, to man. do that. We was, we was talking hip hop in the middle of yeah. that. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, let's, let's bring it back a little bit, okay? Yes. So, as I mentioned, your... Your uh, performance, you performed yeah. for South by Southwest, right? Yep. And you were introduced to, um, sorry, give me a second. Chris Classic and Smino, correct? No, 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 no. no. Oh. Let's bring that back. It wasn't introduced, it was the, the story with giving them backstage passes. Oh, okay. yes. Right okay. Yeah. So. South by Southwest. Yep. Yeah. Uh, South by Southwest is serendipitous. Really, like, 
it kind of was a catalyst to a lot of things to, mm-hmm. you know, and, and brought a lot of things to fruition. And, mm-hmm. like, a, one specific moment is when um, I arrived, and um, I had been out of Chicago for a few years, but I had, you know, I had left Chicago and was like, dude, I'm going to do this punk thing. I'm going to do this rap fusion shit with a band. You know, even though the city wasn't really, like, su- that supportive of it, mm-hmm. I knew that there was there was people that was going to feel what I was doing. And um, so I went to L.A., and then I had, you know, the show happened and shit happened. And I got to South By, and I got a call from my homie Chris Classic. Mm-hmm. And, like, I went... To- that's the first studio studio I ever went to, and I fell in love with it. So we kind of, um, I was rocking with him the whole time. Right. Aren't you affiliated with his... Uh, his studio. His studio, Cause right. Basically, you were the first artist, correct? Not the first artist okay. to ever work there, but, like, I was one... Like, once I found out about the studio, mm-hmm. I made sure the city found out mm-hmm. about it. So mm-hmm. anybody mm-hmm. who ever knew about me knew about yeah. Classic <laughs> Studios. Right, right. And, like, Smino literally said when he went to Columbia, like he from St. Louis, mm-hmm, he's not from mm-hmm. Chicago. When okay. he went to Columbia, he went to school in, in Illinois and in Chicago, downtown. He said when he got there, even before he got there, he's like, dude, I heard Dave Koresh and I heard your mixtape. I heard people talking about you. Soon as we get to school, everybody like, yeah, Dave Koresh, Dave Koresh, Dave Koresh. You, you, you make music? Oh, you heard of Dave Koresh? Yeah, right. he like 17, 18, he crazy. Damn. So he like, damn. This nigga a legend. Like, people right, know him, and right, he, right. he is young as me. Wow. And he's like, when you heard my name, he heard, oh, he recorded Classic Studios. Mm-hmm. It's real live in somebody's house, though. Mm-hmm. It's not like a studio. Mm-hmm. It's at a nigga crib. Wow. Um, and, and Chris Classic, Chris Innumerable, he's, a, he's Filipino. So he's not even a, like a nigga type right. shit. You feel me? So, so it's an anomaly. But for me... Um, I met Chris in a suit outside of a poetry slam. I used to do a lot of poetry. Oh. And I'm, he used to go up to the poetry slams because he knew artists would be at the poetry slams. And I'm outside rapping, making a beat, people freestyling, but I'm making a beat. And I'm spitting. And, like, so he give us a car. As soon as he give us the card, I'm like, yeah, I got to go to his studio. He got a suit on. He bought business. Right. So fast forward, we at South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. He call, I get a call because I'm like, dude, I'm on, I'm on the gram. I'm flexing. I done left Chicago and niggas thought they didn't left. I, I was out dry like I ain't doing nothing in, 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 in L.A. And now I'm at South By and I'm with my band. It's me, ah. my band, nobody from Chicago. What? Me and my band are playing on a show that's in the booklet. And and once you go to South By Southwest, you'll realize that there's a lot of shit going on that's not official. Okay. And this is when I realized that things were changing hmm. where I was becoming who I was going to become and what people thought I was was decimating. So Mm -hmm. when I got there and I got the call, it's because Chris Classic was down there with his artist, Smino, and they they weren't on any official bills. And I was on the official bill getting six artist bands, and I only had four people in my band. So I had extra bands to give away. So my man. You feel me? So my man called me, and I'm like, yeah, Chris Classic, this my, this my nigga. Like, he bought my first mixtapes. He he spent half the money, so I came with the Hollister money. I gave him half. He like, he like man, it's going to be $300, but if you give me more 50 I already paid for him, bro. And gave him to me because he just loved my passion, oh, my energy. Yeah, yeah. So once he gave me that, I told everybody in the city about my mans. Mm-hmm. So we always just had a relationship mm-hmm. that was like, bro, you bought hundreds Literally, look at him. Look me in the eye. Hundreds Mm. of people in here. Mm. Thousands of people have mentioned your influence on them and because of my studio. He's like, I'm forever indebted to you. So when he calls me at the jump, I'm like, yo, what's up? He like, bro, I'll pay you to get them bands. I need them bands. What is me and my artist going to do here with no bands? Right. I said, hey, you looked out for me when you was up. Now I'm up. And I ain't even up. I, I played one little show at, at a little off club that was like a mile off of the main shit, but it was official. It was mm-hmm. with Boiler Room TV. Mm-hmm. So that gave us access and mm-hmm. put us in a booklet. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Right. And he came. I was like, man, meet me right at the convention center. I'm there right now. Come right now. I got two passes for you. You can have them. You can have them off the breast of me. Damn. My mess. later down the line, two, three years down the line, 
I'm chilling. I'm talking to him. He had his wedding. I had a little thing. I was locked up and shit. I couldn't go to the wedding, but I was supposed to be at the table with him and his wife. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I was at the name at the, oh, at the yeah. head joint. Yeah. Like he sent me a picture. Is my name at his wedding? I'm chilling. <laughs> He like, yeah, I had a speech ready and everything. I said, oh, no, you didn't. I said, damn. Wow. I really, really had an influence on my man life. Right, right. So um, in hindsight, he tells me also like, yo, that that time you gave me them passes at South by Southwest, mm-hmm. we, we met a, a rep from CAA, like from an agency. And that kind of like was the trajectory of Smino's like mm-hmm. career. Like that, mm-hmm. that, that, that took him took- over the the edge right. like type he of thing off, right. where he really found you know that that extra support you what he was looking for so because of you hey i i man that's i crazy that's just how that's just how the universe works you right. know and shout out to smee shout out to uh, the shout whole out. game monty yeah. the whole zero fatigue whole classic studios mm-hmm. else and everybody you know even the mommy stefan like you know i think again legacy and influence these things take time to develop mm-hmm. you feel me like mm-hmm. i i, I want to be a legend and not in the same sense as just niggas getting killed before they had their time like i want to be a legend that was around that continuously influenced situations and and, and push shit forward mm-hmm. you know and all of the influence you know niggas oh they taking your style and they getting credit real live in the in the scope of things if i if they didn't steal my style or they wasn't trying to do it like me, was I really that influential? Right. Did I accomplish what I had set out to do? I feel like so. Nah, if they ain't stealing it, you ain't doing it right. You're not really influential unless somebody wants to imitate what you're doing. That's the strongest but form of flattery. They? Yeah, 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 for sure. But I'm exactly. saying they gotta keep doing it. They can't just stop today. Like it gotta happen tomorrow. Then when I drop my next shit, every nigga's more. like, yeah, I'm pulling up to interviews with a, with a tank top on now, cause I'm like Dave Koresh. Like that's the influence that I want. Yeah, this is my this is my new look, man. <laughs> right. It's my new look. Right. You it's literally. The, it's the I don't get no. Are what you spoke. And I'm ready to perform. That's what I I kind of want to put in everybody's mind. That every time you see me. A band could walk through the door and I could start doing some shit right here. Boom, I could right there. Stand up on this table and just break everything. No, I wouldn't do that. Stop. <laughs> but you. These things look like, gee, you was cool 30 seconds ago. Now you was tripping. You break some shit up here. But no. listen to me. You've been such an. Like, the fact that you're such an influence on so many people, like, it's crazy, though. It's, it's beyond crazy. Like, Chance the Rapper and freaking. I don't know, Big Missa. Like, the the yeah. heck? Like, I can't even, uh, it's just. <sighs> we all have our time. We all have our trajectory, you know? I think the material that I'm creating now, I, I it doesn't compare to anything I've ever released or showed people, mm-hmm. you know? I, mm-hmm. I, I think I've been more influential with my personality and my life and mm-hmm. existence mm-hmm. than I have with my actual art, you know? And, and, and sometimes, Arts like that, like I. Wait, real quick, what? just a fun fact, real quick. He's been, uh, he was a, a role or the leading role in Ari Lennox music video. Yeah, BMO. Yeah. Oh shit. The thing is, just... like, I freaking love her so much, and I, was, I was like, I know we're running out of time. Like, we've the, we've the on ran out of time. This interview is absolutely just ah. Like, I can sit here all day with you. Eee. But it's just like, dude, how was it like working with her? First she off, should. I freaking love her. Yeah. I love her so much. I can sit there like... Nah, she day. a vibe for sure. Uh, and uh, like... And she got just... I done been around I'm just yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to be like... Da, 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 but like, you oh, actually... She leveled like, it da, up da, 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 too. She really? Been, recently? You ain't seen her recently? I haven't really. Like, no. I've been in my own bubble, but I'm just I, like, damn. I just hit her on Twitter like last week. I said, I got a six pack now. We need to Stop. run it back. <laughs> like, we need to run that shit back. Like, now niggas gotta see me in that joint flexing. <laughs> last time I was just in there flat. You know, y'all gonna flat flat. But wow. Now I could get it Put that the joint. Come on, freak. Oh. You feel me? Break me off. I could have did some shit last time. But no, it was it was a great experience, and and that again, amazing. that that was serendipitous. I literally just signed up and got that. You. Yeah. Your name. Dave Koresh. 
Right. Yes. Where did you get that name from? Well, I used to, a lot of people, um, when I first started, because I was just afraid. Um, and yeah, fr- fear is a big thing. That's okay. a big theme of mine right okay. now. Okay. But I was afraid, right? Because um, I used to tell people it was cool and fresh put together. Okay. Like Koresh, right. cool and fresh. Cool and fresh. And, and like the cool kids was hot and packed div. Hey. You know, I love Pac Div and you and I. You know, that's y'all West Coast. But. He was in Chicago, like, yo, these niggas was crazy. But though. This name originated from from, from a cult leader because I went to Catholic school. I went to Catholic high school and we had a religion class. And in the class, we had to learn about every religion. And then we had a section about cults that we learned about. And we go through these cult leaders like Jim Jones. You know, Jim Jones is a cult leader. A cult leader, though. Yeah. You know, Jim Jones. You, deci- you Whoa, decided. You decided. Cool though. That's the same but year. But you decided to go after a cult leader, bro. What no, the? but the same year that the ball and jump came out was the same year that I found all of that shit. Or not even the same year. So but you you did that first, and then you heard of the whole Jim Jones. No, I, no, Jim Jones. We already knew who that was. Dipset, Taliban. We knew exactly who Jim Jones was. Uh-huh. And then I in a classroom, oh, and then, and then my teacher's like, "Yeah, Jim Jones is a cult leader," oh, and. I'm I'm like, so you're telling me that the Jim Jones that I know knew about the cult leader and now he's named himself Jim Jones. And then now there's you. And now I'm going to be Dave Koresh. But look, I changed the K to a C because I was born in D.C. <laughs> right? His name's yes. Koresh, like Koresh, K-O-R-E-S-H. Right, right. Mine is C-O-R-E-S-H. And I was like, oh, I could tell people it's cool and fresh. But really, hip hop influencers are the biggest cult leaders of our lifetime Crazy. snoop dogg is a cult leader That's... kanye west is a cult leader okay okay break down the description of cult leader and you will find that the cultural leader is a person that influences culture okay. kanye west has influenced everyone standing in this room right now is influenced by the same person and every day we're going to learn something new about what he's doing and that's you Yes, it is. That is you. That's Every day, question. all day. <laughs> Quick question, okay? You are not, are, a, are an art director yes. of 1245 yep. Music A-P-H. Production House. Yes, yeah. Love it. So meaning that you, you're I, a producer. I'm a producer. Okay, I'm a cool. writer. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, writing, okay. writing is put... So... South by Southwest. Yep. Yeah. Uh, South by Southwest is serendipitous. Really good. Like, it kind of was a catalyst to a lot of things to, mm-hmm. you know, and, and brought a lot of things to fruition. And, mm-hmm. like, a, one specific moment is when um, I arrived and um, I had been out of Chicago for a few years, but I had, you know, I had left Chicago and was like, dude, I'm going to do this punk thing. I'm going to do this rap fusion with a band you know even though the city wasn't really like su- that supportive of it mm-hmm. I knew that there was there was people that was gonna feel what I was doing and um so I went to LA and then I had you know the show happened and shit happened and I got to South by and I got a call from my homie Chris Classic mm-hmm. and like I went to, that's the first studio studio I ever went to and I fell in love with it so we kind of um. I was rocking with him the whole time Right. Aren't you affiliated with his... Uh, his studio. His studio, Cause right. Basically, you were the first artist, correct? Not the first artist to okay. ever work there, but, like, I was one... Like, once I found out about the studio, mm-hmm. I made sure the city found out mm-hmm. about it. So mm-hmm. anybody mm-hmm. who ever knew about me knew about yeah. Classic <laughs> Studios. Right. Right. And, like, Smino literally said when he went to Columbia, like, he from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. He's not from mm-hmm. Chicago. When okay. he went to Columbia, he went to school in, in Illinois, in Chicago, downtown. He said when he got there, even before he got there, he's like, dude, I heard Dave Koresh, and I heard your mixtape. I heard people talking about you. Soon as we get to school, everybody like, yeah, Dave Koresh, Dave Koresh, Dave Koresh. You, you, you make music? Oh, you heard of Dave Koresh? Yeah, right. like, 17, 18, he crazy. Damn. So he like, damn. This nigga a legend. Like, people right, know him, and right, he, right. he as young as me. Wow. And he's like, when you heard my name, he heard, oh, he recorded Classic Studios. Mm. It's real live in somebody's house, though. Mm-hmm. It's not like a studio. Mm. It's at a nigga crib. Wow. Um, and, and Chris Classic, Chris Innumerable, he's a, he's Filipino. So he's not even a, like a nigga's type right. shit. You feel me? So, so it's an anomaly. But for me... 
um, I met Chris in a suit outside of a poetry slam. I used to do a lot of poetry. Oh. And I, he used to go up to the poetry slams because he knew artists would be at the poetry slams. And I'm outside rapping, making a beat, people freestyling, but I'm making a beat. And I'm spitting, and like, so he give us a car. As soon as he give us the car, and I'm like, yeah, I got to go to his studio. He got a suit on. He bought business. Right. So fast forward, we at South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. He call. I get a call, because I'm like, dude, I'm on, I'm on the gram. I'm flexing. I done left Chicago, and niggas thought they didn't left. I, I was out dry. Like, I ain't doing nothing in, 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 in L.A. And now I'm at South By, and I'm with my band. It's me, ah. my band, nobody from Chicago. What? Me and my band are playing on a show that's in the booklet. And, and once you go to South By Southwest, you'll realize that there's a lot of shit going on that's not official. Okay. And this is when I realized that things were changing, hmm. where I was becoming who I was going to become mm -hmm. and what people thought I was mm -hmm. was decimating. So mm -hmm. when I got there and got the call, it's because Chris Classic was down there with his artist, Smino, and they, didn't, they weren't on any official bills. Oh. And I was on the official bill getting six artist bands, and I only had four people in my band. So I had extra bands to give away. So you my man. You feel me? So my man called me, and I'm like, yeah, Chris Classic, this is my, this is my nigga. Like, he bought my first mixtapes. He he spent half the money. So I came with the Hollister money. I gave him half. He like, he like man, it's going to be $300. But if you give me more 50, I already paid for him, bro. And gave him to me because he just loved my passion, oh, my energy. Yeah, yeah. So once he gave me that, I told everybody in the city about my mans. Mm -hmm. So we always just had a relationship mm -hmm. that was like, bro, you bought hundreds. Literally looked at him. Look me in the eye. Hundreds mm. of people in here. Mm. Thousands of people have mentioned your influence on them and because of my studio. He's like, I'm forever indebted to you. Aww. So when he calls me at the jump, I'm like, yo, what's up? He like, bro, I'll pay you to get them bands. I need them bands. What is Damn. me and my artist going to do here with no bands? Right. I said, hey, you I looked you. out for me when you was up. I now I'm you. up. And I ain't even up. I, I played one little show at, at a little off club that was like a mile off of the main shit, but it was official. It was mm -hmm. with Boiler Room TV. Mm -hmm. So that gave us access and mm -hmm. put us in a booklet. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Right. And he came. I was like, man, meet me right at the convention center. I'm there right now. Come right now. I got two passes for you. You can have them. You can have them off the breast of me. Damn. My mess. Later down the line, two, three years down the line. I'm chilling, I'm talking to him, he had his wedding, I had a little thing, I was locked up and shit, I couldn't go to the wedding, but I was supposed to be at the table with him and his wife, mm -hmm. you feel me? Mm -hmm. I was at the name, at the, oh, at the head joke, yeah. like, he sent me a picture, it's my name, at his wedding, oh damn! <laughs> He like, yeah, I had a speech ready and everything. I said, oh, no, you didn't. I said, damn. Wow. I really, really had an influence on my uh, man life. Right, right. So, um, in hindsight, he tells me also, like, yo, that that time you gave me them passes at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. we we met a, a rep from CAA, like, from an agency. And that kind of, like, was the trajectory of Smino's, like, mm -hmm. career. Like, that, mm -hmm. that, that took him took over the... The edge, right. like type he of thing, off, right. where he really found, you know, that that extra support. You. What he was looking for, so. Because of you. Hey, I, I man, that's I. That's crazy. That's just how that's just how the universe works, you right. know. And shout out to Smee, shout out to uh, the shout whole out. game, Monty, yeah. the whole Zero Fatigue, whole Classic Studios, mm -hmm. Elsa, everybody, you know, even Mommy Stefan, like, you know, I think. Again, legacy and influence these things take time to develop mm -hmm. you feel me like mm -hmm. i i, I want to be a legend and not in the same sense as just niggas getting killed before they had their time like i want to be a legend that was around that continuously influenced situations and and, and push forward mm -hmm. you know and all of the influence you know niggas oh they taking your style and they getting credit real live in the in the scope of things if i if they did steal my style or they wasn't trying to do it like me, was I really that influential? Right. Did I accomplish what I had set out to do? I feel like so. Nah, if they ain't stealing it, you ain't doing it right. You're not really influential unless somebody wants to imitate what you're doing. That's the strongest form of flattery. They? 
Yeah, 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 for sure. But I'm exactly. saying they gotta keep doing it. They can't just stop today. Like it gotta happen tomorrow. Then when I drop my neck shit, Keep every nigga's more. like, yeah, I'm pulling up to interviews with a, with a tank top on now because I'm like Dave Koresh. Like that's the influence that I want. Yeah, this is my this is my <laughs> new look, man. Right. It's my new look. Right. You it's literally. The, it's the I don't get no. You f- spoke. And I'm ready to perform. That's what I, I kind of want to put in everybody's mind. That every time you see me, a band could walk through the door and I can start doing. Sp- right here boom right there stand up on his table and just break everything no i wouldn't do that stop (laughs) but you these things look like gee you was cool 30 seconds ago now you was tripping you break some shit here but listen to me you've been such an like the fact that you're such an influence on so many people like it's crazy though it's it's beyond crazy like chance the rapper and freaking i don't know big missa like the, the yeah. heck like I can't even uh, it's just <sighs> we all have our time we all have our trajectory you know I think the material that I'm creating now I, I it doesn't compare to anything I've ever released or showed people mm-hmm. you know I, mm-hmm. I, I think I've been more influential with my personality and my life and mm-hmm. existence mm-hmm. than I have with my actual art you know and 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 sometimes art's like that like i Wait, real quick, what? just a fun fact real quick. He's been, uh, he was the uh, role or the leading role in Ari Lennox music video. Yeah, BMO. Yeah. Oh, shit. Thing is, good. like, I freaking love her so much. And I, I was like, I know we're running out of time. Like, we've, we've beyond ran out of time. This interview is absolutely just, ah. Like, I could sit here all day with you. Hey. But it's just like, dude, how was it like working with her? First she off, should. I freaking love her. Yeah. I love her so much. I can sit there like. Nah, she a vibe for sure. Uh, and uh, like, she got just. I done been around. I'm, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to be like, da, da, da. but like, you oh, actually she leveled da, it da, up da, da, too. Da. She really? Been, recently? You ain't seen her recently? I haven't really, like, no. I've been in my own bubble, but I'm just I, like, damn. I just hit her on Twitter, like, last week. I said, I got a six-pack now. We need to Stop. run it back. Like, we need to run that shit back. Like, now niggas got to see me in that joint flexing. Last time, I was just in there flat. You know, I was on flat, flat. But wow. Now, I could get in Put that joint. Put the joke. hubba. <gasps> my oh, you feel me? Break me off. I could have did some shit last time but no it was it was a great experience and and again that that was serendipitous i literally just signed up and got that you yeah your name dave koresh right yes where did you get that name from well i used to a lot of people um when i first started because i was just afraid um and yeah fear is a big thing okay big theme of mine right now. okay but i was afraid right because um i used to tell people it was cool and fresh put together okay like Koresh, right. cool and fresh, cool and, fresh. And, and like the cool kids was hot and Pac Div. Hey. You know, I love Pac Div and you and I. You know, that's y'all West Coast. But he was in Chicago, like yo, these niggas was crazy. But though, this name originated from from, from a cult leader because I went to Catholic school. I went to Catholic high school, and we had a religion class. And in the class, we had to learn about every religion. And then we had a section about cults that we learned about. And we go through these cult leaders like Jim Jones. You know Jim Jones is a cult leader. A cult leader, though? Yeah. You know Jim Jones, You decide, You Ballin. decided. Cool, though. That's the same but year. But you decided to go after a cult leader, bro? What no, the? but the same year that the ball and Jones came out was the same year that I found all of that shit. Not even the same year. So you you did that first, and then you heard of the whole Jim Jones booming. No, I, no, Jim Jones. We already knew who that was. Dipset, Taliban. We knew exactly who Jim Jones was. Uh-huh. And then I in a classroom, oh, and then my teacher's gotcha. like, "Yeah, Jim Jones is a cult leader." Oh, and I'm Jesus. like, "So you're telling me that the Jim Jones that I know knew about the cult leader, and now he's named himself." Jim Jones. And then now there's you. And now I'm going to be Dave Koresh. But look, I changed the K to a C because I was born in D.C. <laughs> right? His name's yes. Koresh, like Koresh, K-O-R-E-S-H. Right, right. Mine is C-O-R-E-S-H. And I was like, oh, I could tell people it's cool and fresh. But really, hip-hop influencers are the biggest cult leaders of our lifetime. Crazy. Snoop Dogg is a cult leader. Kanye what? West is a cult leader. 
Okay, okay. Break down the description of cult leader and you will find that the cultural leader is a person that influences culture. Okay. Kanye West has influenced everyone standing in this room right now, is influenced by the same person, and every day we're going to learn something new about what he's doing. And that's you. Yes, it is. That is you. That's every day, all day. <laughs> Quick question, okay? You are not, are it. Are an art director yes. of uh, 1245 yep. Music NPH. Production House. Yes, yeah. Love it. So meaning that you, you're I, a producer. I'm a producer. Okay, I'm a cool. writer. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, writing okay. writing mm-hmm. has put the money in my pocket, I can't lie. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. been my breadwinner. Yeah. Um, so from there, we piggyback that into... The uh, development of artists and development of production. Mm-hmm. I live with like uh, two artists, three artists, and producers and writers. Um, Wada is one oh. of those, and uh, we've actually she she would be like is she? one of our first like actual pro- uh, develop projects we've made over oh. hundreds of songs um awesome. we've curated and i've held yeah. with projects music videos yeah, right. um, kind of hands-on in a lot of areas mm-hmm. so i've just been using all of my talents and skills to kind of help and influence the homies and who i can so many talents in this one yeah. okay next right uh 93 uh what punks. is that punks right yeah, that's the band with me so they, you said you're a shocker uh, what do you mean by that yeah I, oh, i'm a professional sh- that's a that's a rapper. What do you like? I, I just okay. Because I'm, I'm a little together. confused. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, like, cool. I just had a okay, show. cool. Oh, okay. Listen. Lastly, I'm gonna just jump into the rapid fire. We're gonna have to Let's do go. a part two or part three and maybe even a part four because this is all day with you, like I'm saying. But if you had to choose, all right. If you had to choose, flow from progressive. Or Jake from State yeah, Farm. Stop playing, bro. Stop playing. Y'all, who, who, she tried to set you up with that? Come on, man. You know I'm running but with But you messed game. it up because you talked about it earlier. I was like, ah. He just texted me. That's, like, that's gay. So, but yeah, that's you, That's, that's so your funny. best friend, though. That is. This man is that so is. tied in. He's tied in in every single way. It's crazy. But honestly, dude, seriously, thank you so much for coming in the studio, like, 90220 gallery 90220, we love hey. the fact that you came in on the red dot series for two minutes at the red dot shout hey. out your instagram for me please uh, if you want to catch me on instagram it's dave koresh d-a-v-e-c-o-r-e-s-h one two four five and you want to catch the gang at twelve forty five, like 1212 f-o-r-t-y-f-i-v-e 1245 so um yeah that's yeah. that's us on the internet yeah well Stalk thank you us. thank you so much and make sure you guys are following us uh 15 minutes on the red dot red dot series on red instagram dot. Ah, ah, da, da, da. it is your girl kayla ashay and we are tuning out thank you so much for tuning in peace